What's up, LU? I am Kevin Rome, president of Lincoln University, and I'm happy to be back for another show. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about sports, student activities, and we're going to see what's up with our faculty at Lincoln University. So today, I'm excited to have some very fascinating guests. We're going to start with our women's basketball team. I'm going to have the coach and a player introduce themselves, and then we're going to see what's up with basketball, women's basketball at LU. Nicole? Hi, I'm Nicole Collier. I'm the head women's basketball coach at Lincoln University. And I'm Jakia Mitchell. I'm a player, I'm a senior, and I've been here for four years. So what's up with LU women's basketball this season? What can we expect? Um, you know, as of right now, we're kind of in a, uh, a struggling point in our season. We, we have some injuries. We have a whole bunch of new kids. Um, so right now, we're trying to find our cohesiveness amongst our team. Um, but I think once we get that figured out, you'll, it'll be an exciting uh, element of basketball to watch, up-tempo. Uh, we'd like to pick our defense up a little bit, but hope to get out and compete every night. Okay. And every day, we're just working to get better and Hopefully, we can pull it through to beat our opponents and just make sure we put Lincoln on the map. Okay. Well, I've seen a game, and I was very excited at that game that I saw. I mean, it was a tight defense. I mean, it was great shooting. Uh, it was excitement. It was intensity the whole game. Is that what we should expect this season? You know, I'd like to hope that we can shoot the ball <laughs> a little bit better. Um, I thought we had a great crowd. Yeah. And I think if we could get that night in and night out, I mean, that just shows that Lincoln University is excited about what we're doing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would, I would hope we'd shoot the ball a little bit better, but defensively, we're going to tighten up. Uh, we'd like to keep it a little more up-tempo, pick up the press, uh, be a little more effective in that area. But um, I mean, I think we had a great atmosphere, and I hope we can continue that. It was. So who are the key players to watch this season? Uh, you know, as of right now, I think we're still trying to figure that out. We have a lot of new faces. We have eight new kids. Um, Jakia has been here four years. She's been a four year starter for us. Um, she's been out with a broken nose for about two weeks. Okay. Today was her first day of practice. So Jakia is always fun to watch. Um, she's been in the starting rotation for, for that reason. Um, but we have a new inside kid, Kiana Wharton. Um, Hunter Yoakum from Dixon, Missouri is our only true freshman. She can really put some points on the board. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited about all the kids we brought in. Okay. I noticed that it seems like everyone on the roster played at the game that I was at. Is that, are you trying to figure out which players are going to get in the rotation or? We're still searching for our rotation. Okay. Um, last year we didn't have a lot of depth. This year we have a lot of depth. Now yeah. we just have to figure out how to play each other together. So yeah, we're going to play 10 deep, 11 deep, um, and we're just searching for the right groups that play well together. Okay. Who are our biggest rivals? Who, who are the teams that we get excited for and that we really want to beat? All of them. All of them. All of so, them. is there anyone in particular that kind of stands out as a rival? I I played at Missouri Western. Okay. I coached at Central Missouri, so both of those are big targets for me. Um, but I don't really. I mean, we're kind of in the middle state. It's as far as a rivalry. I would say Central Missouri is our closest team, um, and I coached there. I play. Or I yeah. I, the, coach, the guy that coaches there is a the guy that I played for. So any time I can knock him off, I'm pretty excited about okay. it. Tell us about being, how do you balance being a student and an athlete? It's actually tough. I mean, I have to make time for everything and do good with everything. So, I mean, school comes first and then practice. But when it comes to practice, I just work hard. And after that, get back in the books. Okay, so. so what is it that you want to say to your team, to the fans, <laughs> to your family, anyone out there? I want to say thank you for the support and keep on supporting us and we will continue to work hard. Okay, and coach, what would you like to say? Uh, not a great performance the first game, but we'd love for you guys to keep coming out and supporting us. Um, we're working at getting better. We are going to get better. There's a lot of growth for us uh, and we have a huge upside. So we'd love to have you out and supporting. Well, I want to say to our fans and to the Lincoln community out there, if you want to see some exciting basketball, come watch our women play and you won't be disappointed. So come out and support them, and we know that they're going to win eventually. So eventually. thanks for showing up today. You're welcome. Thank you.
Over 1,000 Central Missouri kids are in foster care. Nearly 400 will age out of foster care without a forever family. You could be the one to make a difference. I'm Deanna Alonzo, former foster youth and executive director of the Central Missouri Foster Care and Adoption Association. Our organization supports foster and adoptive children and families. We are working to change the statistics for these kids. Be the one who makes a difference. Find out more at ccfosteradopt.com. The Boys and Girls Club works to enable all youth, especially those who need us most, to reach their full potential as productive, responsible, and caring adults. Success is within the reach of every young person who enters our doors. We work with youth to ensure they achieve academic success, develop good character and citizenship, and have a healthy lifestyle. Boys and Girls Club of the Capital City, while some doors just open, our doors transform. Great futures start here. Find us online at bgcjc.com and like us on Facebook. We're proud to be a United Way partner agency. Hi, I'm Kevin Rome, president of Lincoln University, and we're back talking sports right now. I have with me our men's basketball coach and one of our golfer. Did I say basketball? <laughs> I meant golf. Our golf coach and one of our golfers, and they'll introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Dan Frost. I am the men's head golf coach. Okay. I'm Eric Kosmaka, and I'm a four-year senior here. Well, welcome to the show. We're coming off a great season last year. Something really excited, exciting happened last year. Tell us about it. Well, we won the National Minority Gol Golf Championship for the fifth time in the school's history. Uh, wow. It's been several years since we've done it before, so it was something very exciting. Um, we we're very proud of that championship. Okay, and where does that take place? In Port St. Lucie, Florida at the PGA headquarters. Mm -hmm. uh, the PGA of America puts on the championship and they do a great job of, of running our tournament. Okay, so tell us what was that like? Tell oh, us it's an amazing experience. experience. Um, we were treated um, with great hospitality down there. Um, it feels like you're in with, treated like a PGA pro um, okay. inside the ropes. Um, it's always great competition. There, um, we have two rivals: Virginia uh, State and Morehouse State. Morehouse I'm, College. Morehouse College. My undergraduate institution. Uh, so hopefully we'll beat them again. But yeah, no, they're great. Both of them are great schools. Um, great programs they have there. But I mean, since I've been, I've made it there all three years now, mm -hmm. um, and I hope to make it back um, in May. But every time, it's always first, second, or third. We're down there and. Came close my sophomore year and my freshman year, but finally took care of it last year. Wow, that's great. And I hope to be there this year if I get a chance. So I noticed you're sporting your ring from the... Yes, from sir. The, can we get a picture of that? Yeah. Uh, the championship <laughs> ring. That's awesome. All right. So how long have you been playing golf? Um, I've been playing golf uh, for probably since I was seven or eight years old. Uh, my dad raised me. He's golf pro and took me all the way up into where I am now, so I'm thankful for his support and also my family being there to watch me. So. Okay, and how long have you been coaching golf at Lincoln? This is my third year. Okay. Uh, I was a student assistant for one year, uh, and I was a player actually all four years. Okay. So I've been at Lincoln for several years, but only my third year as head, as head coach. Wow, that's pretty quick to win a championship after three <laughs> years, huh? Yeah, I'm very grateful. Um, I knew it would be tough, but um, we got better pretty quick. Have a great group of guys. I think we're even better this year. So. Okay. So, how does one become part of the Lincoln's golf team? What What do they have to do? Do you recruit, or do they show up and tell you they're interested in golf? A little bit of both. Uh, I know a lot of high school golf coaches in Mid Missouri, and a lot of them will contact me if they've got a player that they think is good enough to play at the college level, and then uh, I'll look at their scores to see what kind of scores they shoot in high school and um, see what kind of work ethic they've got. Because mm -hmm. if a player is good in high school but he doesn't want to work, in the long run it isn't really going to do us any good and kind of go from there. Okay, well what's a good score to have if you're interested in playing collegiate golf? If a player, by the time he's a senior, can shoot 75 or below consistently, he'll be a pretty good player. Okay. Um, if I could shoot 75, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. <laughs> so that, that's a great score to shoot for. I'm shooting probably like 175. So <laughs> I, I need to work on my golf. 
And so where do you all play uh, locally? Where do, where do you have your matches? Well, we, we practice at Jefferson City Country Club. Uh, the MIAA has a rotation. Each school hosts every four years. Mm -hmm. So we won't host again. We'll host next fall, actually. Mm -hmm. But then we won't host again for another four years. Um, typically, tournaments are kind of all over the Midwest, uh, all over Missouri, Arkansas, Kansas, Nebraska, uh, obviously Florida for the minority championship. Mm -hmm. So kind of all over the Midwest, really. Okay. As a student athlete, what is, it, what is the life of a college golfer? How, do you, how much do you practice? How much do you travel? Tell us a little uh, bit about that. For traveling, we are always traveling either on a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. We have practice rounds on Sunday, and then for tournament play, we play Monday, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on the location, sometimes we travel Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, but for the time, I mean, we practice every day, Monday through Friday, sometimes wow. on Saturday. Um, we're putting in... For golf, we put it four to five hours a day. Wow. Uh, depending on what we do, two hours of drills and then play nine holes or just 18 holes and then some drills. Okay. And what do you do when it's cold and snowing? Uh, when it's cold, we like to, uh, we just started, we're doing workouts um, with the strength and conditioning coach here. He's doing a great job with us. Um, so hopefully to improve our flexibility and strength, we're going to do that. And then... From there, we also just do on our own or whenever it's nice out. I mean, it's Missouri weather. You never know. <laughs> so we get out there and practice when we can. So which golfers do you idolize? Which golfers do you look at as uh, the ones you want to play like? Um, I, I've always looked at Adam Scott as mm -hmm. one of my main guys that I focus on. On he, he shows a great personality and attitude toward the game. Nothing. He's never been in trouble, never caused okay. any okay. thing against popularity against himself. So. That's okay. What I'm so what do you want to say to your other players and, and how, many, how many students do we have on the golf team? Currently seven. Seven. So what do you want to say to the other players out there, to your fans or family? Uh, well, I'd like to say to the players, uh, keep up the hard work. Um, they've done a great job the past couple of years and I hope to continue to get better. That's something I strive for every year. As long as we get better every year, we're moving in the right direction. Um, so I know they're working hard with our strength and conditioning coach right now. I appreciate that. And I would like to see some, uh, some of our fans at tournaments, but I know it's difficult since we're always traveling. Um, so next fall, I'd like to see everybody out at Jeff City Country Club in early September. Okay. Anything you'd like to uh, say? Yeah, I, I mean, as a senior, I would like to focus on, I mean, it's going to be my last year here. I know we won last year, but there's no reason we can't win every year. So I'd like to finish up my senior year with one more national championship to leave here at Lincoln. And I'd like to thank the support of my parents um, for coming out there when they can. I know it's tough travel and work, but that's why I'd like to thank them the most. Okay. Okay, fans, let's get out there and support our golf team. So thanks for showing up today, and have a wonderful season. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Hi, I'm Kurt Probst and I'm a big brother. Missouri Valley Big Brothers Big Sisters desperately need your help. Right now, more than 50 children are waiting for someone to spend time with them, waiting for a mentor. By spending time with a child, you can change their future and improve their chances of succeeding in life. All it takes is one hour a week. Call Missouri Valley Big Brothers Big Sisters at 634-3290 to get involved today. We are proud to be a United Way Partner Agency. I'm Ann Littlefield. I'm Claudia Kehoe. And we're here to represent the Food Bank of Central and Northeast Missouri. Over half of the Missouri students qualify for free or reduced lunches at school during the week. But on the weekends, many children go home to empty refrigerators. The Food Bank provides buddy packs, backpacks full of nutritious food, so over 6,600 hungry children have food on the weekends. But the need is much greater. Will you help? When you adopt a buddy, you reach out to a child in need. Your 50 cents a day will make a difference in a child's life. Visit www.sharefoodbringhope.org or call the food bank, 573-474-1020 to adopt a buddy.
Hello and welcome back to What's Up LU. I'm Kevin Rome, President of Lincoln University, and I'm here with Terrence, who's the President of the Campus Activity Board. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, actually, I'm the, um, oh, the Treasurer. Treasurer, all right. Yes, um, this is my second year on the board. Last year, I started as Director of community, community and Cultural Events, and I'm the Treasurer. Okay, so where are you from? I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, and what year did you say you were? This is my junior year. Okay, your junior year, but your second year on the board. Yes. So what does the Campus Activity Board do? We serve the students in um, educational, community, social, and record, 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 rec recreational, recreational recreational activities. Yes. Okay, so what are some of the activities that you've done this year? Um, we had Wild Week, Homecoming, I know, we had a breast cancer walk, Project Roots with Mr. HBCU, Reginald Johnson. Um, we had a canned food drive. We did a feed a family. Mm -hmm. um, and we just got back from a um, trip in Iowa. Okay. So what made you want to be involved in campus activities? Well, um, my mission in life is to, st to serve other people. Mm -hmm. and this is the best way to serve my students, the faculty, and staff. Okay. So... What's your, what, what is it that you want to do when you graduate from Lincoln? Um, right now, I'm pursuing a um, degree in elementary education, but I think I'm thinking about changing my major, and I want, I want to get a degree in leadership training with an emphasis in program planning. Okay, program planning. Sounds like you want to go into student affairs or something along yes. those lines. Maybe take Ms. Noble's job Okay, you Ms. Ferguson. Take, okay, who is Ms. Noble? I'm um, director of student activities. Okay, so one day you want to come back and serve Lincoln as the director of campus activities or the... Vice President for Student Affairs? Yes, that's my goal. That's your goal. Okay, well, I'm sure you can get there. So, how many students are involved in your committee? Um, we actually have, right now, we have like eight students. We have a chair, co-chair, secretary, treasurer, historian, director of, director of entertainment, director of community events. Okay, and so for a student who's sitting out there watching this and thinking, I want to get involved in student activities, how does one go about doing that? Um, April, we have applications coming out. You can be involved in um, campus activity board. You can be involved in student government or the royal court. Okay. So what have you learned through your experiences working with this board? Ooh, it's not about you. It's about the students. It's what the students not want, not what you want. I had to leave myself at the door plenty of times. Okay. So it's all about those who you're serving. Yes. Okay, what can we anticipate? What's going to happen in the spring? In the spring, we have an MLK celebration, which is January 23rd, 2014, in Richardson Auditorium. We have a Spring Fest. The theme is um, school days from the movie. We have a lot of great um, events going on. We have a poet by the name of Odd Rod. He's really, really good. We have a Motown review. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, some other things. We have a church with CAB, um, the jump off. We show on the movie school days, casino night, um, pajama party, and we're thinking about maybe doing an all white party. Okay, sounds like a lot of exciting events that'll take place in the spring. What are the last comments you'd like to say to the students about the CAB and their involvement? Um, two things. Join us for World AIDS Day, December 2nd, in front of the calf, and Join us for um, Midnight Final Breakfast, which will be December the 8th in the library from 10 to 12. Okay. Well, Terrence, thanks for joining me today, and we hope that you have an outstanding turnout for your events and have a great semester and a great spring. So thanks. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joy Sweeney with the Council for Drug-Free Youth. The Council for Drug-Free Youth is an organization started by parents to help prevent alcohol and drug abuse among youth in our community. We believe that with accurate information, young people will understand that a drug-free life is not only possible, but fulfilling. Our mission is to create and maintain collaborative community coalitions united by a common goal to promote drug-free lifestyles among youth across mid-Missouri. We help over 15,000 students each year through our programs and outreach learn the importance of maintaining a drug-free life. We also provide the understanding that there are consequences to the choices we make.
We help them understand the importance of being true to themselves and the responsibilities they have to those that are important in their life. The vision for the Council for Drug-Free Youth is to empower youth to make healthy lifestyle choices and live drug-free. Our philosophy is that an ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure. It saves lives, stops crime, minimizes incarceration, provides productive members of society, and creates amazing communities. The youth of our community are our future, and we all benefit when they succeed. The Council for Drug-Free Youth hopes you will join our efforts. Call 573-636-2411 or email joy at jccdfy.org or check out our website jccdfy.org or like us on Facebook. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kevin Rome, president of Lincoln University, and we're back. And now we're here to talk with the chair of our faculty senate. Please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your background and what area you teach in. Okay. Um, I'm Dr. Amy Gossett. I teach political science here on campus. Um, my background is that I am originally from Louisiana and had a long, circuitous route to Lincoln University, but I love it here. I've been here nine years. Okay. And um, it was, I guess, my turn to, <laughs> to serve as the faculty senate, senate chair. And what does the faculty senate chair do? Listen, a lot. Um, I run the meetings, but that is probably the easiest part of the, of the position. Um, it's to, to kind of be the mediator in some ways, to, to hear faculty concerns um, and to express those to the administration when mm -hmm. necessary and also to, to help in the shared governance idea. To, faculty are very, very integral part, as you know, of a small mm -hmm. university, and we have 150 members, which is rare for a university as well. Um, every fa full-time faculty member can be a member of the Senate. So. Okay, and so the faculty are the core of any university. They are the lifeblood. They are the ones who keep the institution running what made you want to be a faculty member? Um, the, when I was in graduate school, uh, I knew I had the passion for political science, but I didn't really know what that meant. Mm -hmm. um, and the first class I taught, um, I was just ecstatic when I left the room. Uh, I never quite had that feeling of empowering students before. Mm -hmm. And giving them the tools to get excited and to, in my case, giving them tools to, to make good decisions about citizenship and, mm -hmm. and politics and be cr critical consumers of information. I just, there's nothing better than that. And, and you know, I have to say over my career, I've met few faculty who've had as much passion as you about teaching and the students and the academy. How do you translate that to others? How do you get others excited and, and get them to the same point that you're at? I've actually uh, been told that I do that quite a bit. <laughs> um, I, I think when you love something, it it's just shows. Uh, a lot of my students, especially the freshmen, come in in American government and say, oh, we have to take this course. But by the end, they're excited. And I think that's true of any subject area. If you're excited about it and you're passionate about the information, that translates into, into your curriculum. And um, getting other faculty members, we kind of seek each other out and we, and we help each other out. Um, I think most faculty get into this profession because they love to see, to mm -hmm. see students grow. What's nice about, let's say, doing it at the university level versus another level is that you, you focus on their brains, you know. Um, to watch them mature over those four years is just, mm -hmm. it's a fantastic thing. And we're fortunate to have great faculty here at mm -hmm. Lincoln University. What are some of the priorities for the Faculty Senate this, this year? I think uh, trying to, huh, that's a good question. Um, I think faculty, we're in a transition, as you know. Mm -hmm. you, you are a new president. And I think the faculty just want to feel empowered as well mm -hmm. um, in some ways. The, the idea of, of there are three areas in academia that we, we sort of get graded on, and, and that's teaching, research, and service. 
and to find that balance and to um, to have the time and the energy to do all three is something that we would love to, to, mm -hmm. to bring our students into as well. And on a campus this side, teaching is such an important role for faculty. How does one balance research and teaching and do both well? What's nice about Lincoln is that they, we do appreciate teaching mm -hmm. and, and we call some of that research applied research. Mm -hmm. So. I use my students as guinea pigs. I use my <laughs> students as research assistants. Um, they help me a lot in knowing, I, my specialty is political philosophy and public po education policy. So I'm at an advantage there. I can, I can talk to them and get them involved in projects and, and see what they care about and what they wanna see changed. So um, I consider that all research, it's wonderful. Okay. Well, what would you like to say to the students out there and the faculty out there? You have this platform. What, what message do you want to send to them? Um, that we are, ha we are an amazing campus, yes. that we have a diversity that's not seen anywhere else. And one of the reasons I love this school is because we can be a microcosm for the, for the rest of the country. Um, and we're small enough and diverse enough that we can take a lot of chances and have a lot of amazing successes that a lot of univer large universities don't get the opportunity to have. And we get to know our students. I mean, that is a dream um, to have 30 students that I know everything. I mean, I grow with them as they grow over the four years and they know each other so well they can finish each other's sentences. So um, I think it's a real advantage that we have over other schools. Right, and I agree. And we were so fortunate to have Dr. Amy Gossett here today to speak with us, and we're fortunate to have her and the many faculty that we have at Lincoln University who give their all every day to make a difference for our students. And so that's what's up with LU. We have great faculty, we have great athletes, we have great coaches, we have great students involved on every level, and we have to continue to work together to make that happen at Lincoln University. So that's what's up, LU. Thanks for viewing.